If you recall, after you learned about numbers which are abstract, you were able to use numbers to represent physical quantities with realistic meanings. For example, five miles or twenty kilograms. Just like that, now you have learned about Cartesian vectors as a mathematical tool. You can also use Cartesian vectors to represent real physical quantities, such as position or force. In an established three-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system, if a point P has coordinates of x, y, and z, then its position can be expressed by its position vector r, which starts from the origin and ends on point P. As a Cartesian vector, r can be expressed as x i plus y j plus z k. If you have two points, point A with coordinates x a, y a, and z a. And point B with coordinates x b, y b, and z b, and if you want to find the relative position of point B relative to point A, this relative position can be expressed by a vector r a b that starts from point A and ends on point B, and r a b equals to position vector r b minus position vector r a. On the other hand, the relative position of point A relative to point B. Is expressed by the opposite vector r b a that starts from point b and ends on point a, and r b a equals to r a minus r b, and it also equals to negative r a b. We can also express force vectors as Cartesian vectors. For example, for the tension force F in the cable directed from point A to point B. We know that we can express it as its magnitude multiplied by a unit vector that describes its direction. How do we find this unit vector? Since the position vector from point A to point B has the same direction as the force, we can use the position vector r a b to find the unit vector u a b, which is given by this equation, with x a y a z a and x b y b and z b being the coordinates of point A and B respectively. Therefore, vector f equals to its magnitude multiplied by the unit vector u a b. Please note, just like the number one, unit vectors are dimensionless, but position vectors and force vectors, and also other physical quantities, all have their appropriate units, such as meters or newtons. Let's look at this example. The force has a magnitude of one hundred and twenty pound. And its direction is shown in this image as directed from point A to point B, and the coordinates of both point A and B are given. We need to express this force in its Cartesian vector form. Since we know its magnitude, if we also know its unit vector, then we can easily determine its Cartesian vector. The key to solving this problem is to recognize that this force has the same direction as the position vector from point A to point B. Therefore, they have the same unit vector, since unit vector only indicates the direction. So we start with finding the position vector r a b from point A to point B. It equals to the position vector of the end point, point B, minus the position vector of the start point, point A. It's calculated by the coordinates of point B minus the coordinates of point A. And as you can see, it does have the unit of a foot. From here, we can calculate its unit vector u a b, which equals to r a b divided by its magnitude. Notice how the unit foot gets cancelled out, and this unit vector is also the unit vector of our force. Therefore, our force vector is determined by its magnitude multiplied by this unit vector u a b, and this answers this question. Notice that this force vector does have the unit of pound.